Hello everyone, it's Generic Eric here with a IBM keyboard thing. This right here is a like a 1988 regular standard Model M from IBM. Uh, this is the one I use daily and you can notice there are no super keys here or Windows keys, whatever you want to call them. And for my workflow, I really need those. So obviously you have to do some uh, button remapping and it's not always the best thing to do in the operating system at that level. So what I've been using is one of these. It's a uh, source converter and it actually has a, a teeny controller in here that you can program for uh, macros or remappings or anything like that. So whenever you press a key. So in my instance, I remap a caps lock here to uh, a super key because I mean, caps lock is fairly useless anyway. So I kind of wanted to show how to do this with, it should work with any of the Soros converters. So I've got one here that's got the RJ45 uh, plug that's for the terminal keyboard. And that's the one I'm gonna focus on today because it actually has keys that they should work, but they don't because it's just built completely different. So I'll show you that one here. Okay, so you can see here that this is the uh, the Model M terminal um, edition, I guess is if you want to call it that. And this one actually has the RJ45 plug. So it just goes right into the source converter there, and then you can plug it into USB. So the other one is actually a PS2 to USB. So this one you'll notice, uh, I don't know if you can really see the keys too much, but a lot of them are labeled funny, different, and it was for, you know, different applications than just regular, you know, uh, PC use. It's uh, for probably some kind of a, a server, uh, maybe even like a dumb terminal. So instead of like uh, on a normal keyboard, you'd have like, you know, a big plus uh, or addition key right here. We have field plus, uh, this arrow key, field minus. These two are not even labeled. Um, other things like, uh, you know, scroll lock is help. Uh, most of the other keys, like your general keys that you're going to use to type are the same. Um, enter is field exit. But there are some problems with this. So some of these keys, like the escape up here, that is mapped to like, I don't know what it was. It was like, uh, I'll remember once I look at the code. But things like this was mapped to escape by default. That's just what it registers as. So those are the types of things that we want to fix by programming our source converter. So let's hop into that. Okay, welcome to my workstation here where we're gonna get started on uh, getting the tools and everything that we need to uh, program the, uh, the Teeny controller in the source converter. So I've made kind of a repository here with, uh, you know, kind of my configs that I use. Figured I'd just share those out and just a little bit on, you know, what you need and, uh, the commands you're going to need to to send the configurations to the converter so it can store it. So the first thing we're going to want to look at is HID listen. And I've got a tab open here. So it's going to just uh, spit out outputs and codes for each key that you press. And that's going to be useful for figuring out which key is which and how that works. So here we can go ahead and here I'll go ahead and download it again even though I made a new folder here for this guide here. So I'll just save HID listen into there. And now there it is and I think it's already executable so I could just do Um, did I, did 
Okay, so you got to make it executable. So just do a change mod on it. And right now it's listening. So if I press like A, it's going to give me this output, which in of itself, it doesn't look very useful, but it really is. So I have A there. Let's go ahead and get out of that. And I've had a thing where I've had to replug the computer the keyboard in after I use that tool otherwise it'll mess up my keys like it'll just type gibberish so that's something to keep in mind if that's what's happening with you so we can see here that we've got when I typed a I got a this plus zero four here that means that I pressed it and then when I let go it minus zero four but zero four is what we're looking for and where that actually makes sense is if we go to uh, this geek hack link. I believe I have that in there. Okay, I don't, but I will add it. This geek hack uh, page for the Soros converter, which there's all sorts of other neat information in there too, but they have all these downloads down here. And you can just download... Uh, Pretty much anything with documentation in it that's not an update so 1.12 is fine i'll go ahead and download that into the guide here and then okay so i've got that there so our converter so we're gonna unzip that and now we have docs folder there so we'll see what's in there so they they put all this uh documentation in html format so you just load it with a browser so if you do like firefox uh index.html or you could double click it in your explorer or whatever that's fine um they give you all the documentation which is really nice just and you can click through it the main thing that i'm concerned with is the code section here because Remember 04, 04, it tells us that that's supposed to be A. So if we're going to remap something, which here, let's look at, uh, here is what I came up with for the terminal uh, keyboard. So we just add a, a remap block there, and then you end it with end block. And in the middle is where you remap your key. So... What I mentioned earlier was I remap caps lock and we call the super key L or R uh, GUI. Uh, depending on which one you, you want to use, it shouldn't matter. But also the other keys here. So like um, when I press the print screen button on the terminal model M, it actually comes up as F23. So if we look at the documentation here, F23, when I press the the, uh, the print screen key, it comes up with a plus 72, and I don't want that. So if you want, you can look at, so there's print screen, and we're just going to remap it to print screen. And that would uh, register a 46. So I'm just taking F23 space print screen. It's really as simple as that. And there's some other ones. I went through the whole thing and figured out what keys are what. And I kind of put this together. And it's very opinionated like I like I put here. So just, uh, you know, I remapped some of the, the keypad keys to like... Uh, like undo, um, I fixed the pad minus to pad plus because that's what it read out. So, so it's more uh, like an actual regular you know keyboard we're all familiar with. And then there's other keys which are weird, like language select key. So that was actually where pause is supposed to be. There's different uh, little like media buttons that you can use. So I I took what they thought was scroll lock which is actually one of the top right keys and just i was playing around with it and turned it into you know it launches the calculator 
and then you can do like volume up, volume down. Um, that's kind of just, you know, your preference up to you, what you want to do with that. So anyway, I don't think I'm really missing anything on that. Uh, there's other things in their documentation that are probably worth looking at, like the config. Um, we're just going to be remapping keys with this guide, but, uh, but there's other things you can do. Uh, you can, you can do full on macros if you want to. Um, there's different layers that you can, uh, mess around with. So like if you want to have different configurations of all your keys, you can set it up to where you press, you know, one key and it's you know your main configuration that you use and then you press another key it'll switch to a completely different configuration for you so that might be something to look at like if you use it for like a you know some kind of editing program uh you know it could be used for all sorts of different things and it's really nice because it's at the hardware level and you don't have to you know once it's there it's there and you can also you know override it and stuff and update it um, however you want to do that but this is a great uh, source of documentation for all of that. Um, there's, yeah, there's just a lot here. And they recommend, so using in here, so you can use the Sora converter and they actually have tools in there and, and they uh, give you a overview of the tools. But I use this SC tools instead it's kind of got everything built in that you need and it just installs it to where you can run it from any directory which is kind of nice so let's go over with uh installing the sc tools so right now i noticed that they updated uh hit api because it's being actively developed so when you do a git uh clone on this it's not gonna download the the hadapi uh uh folder here which you actually need so what you're gonna have to do is let's go to our okay there we are so let's do a git clone and we'll pull se tools in there now we have them good so if we go to SE tools, so it's got the the Hidappy directory there, but there's nothing in it, and we really need it. So let's go into theirs, and we're just gonna download it as a zip guide, and we'll just put it in the SE tools dealio there. Okay, so now we got that .zip file, and we'll just unzip it. Okay. Would have been easier if I just renamed it. Alright, so if we look in there, all that stuff... It's just everything we need. We can just move all of that into, uh, we'll do a slash everything and we'll move that into Adapi and then, okay, now it's all in there. And if I remember right, so we're in the SE tools, we've got Adapi in there. That's good. All right. So if we do a dot slash autogen.sh it's going to go and get it ready for make and make install perfect all right so we'll do a make sudo make install okay beautiful so it automatically adds our udev rules and everything so we should be good. So now we have access to the SC tool binary and gas, which we will also be using. 
So SE tool kind of combines some of the other tools to where you can read and write to the uh, the source converter. And the SCAS uh, binary there actually converts our config into a binary config that, that the chip can read. So what we do is, so I've got these uh, two configs here. So this is the only thing I use on my everyday keyboard. I, all I want is that uh, that super key there. Everything else is just fine. Uh, maybe in the future I'll remap stuff, but, but that's all I have for that one. Um, but we're looking at the, uh, the terminal one, so... Yeah. Well, actually, might be easier just to clone it. So let's go to our root, and we're going to get clone. My repository there. All right, so. All right, so we got our. Terminal SC there and our PS2 SC, we're just going to concentrate on the terminal SC. And what we're going to do is type scas space terminal.sc. And we're going to convert that to SEB for uh, SC binary. All right. And if we look back in there, now we have that SCB file in there. And if remembered so se tool we looked at the help for that so we can do se tool write and actually we're going to have to use sudo on that and you want to use the scb so sudo se tool write terminal.scb and there we have it it wrote it to the device and it's actually um, at this point just working so if I hit my caps lock key I get my my overview there which it it, it was already programmed so obviously it worked but uh, if you do have trouble uh, you might have to like unplug it or whatever plug it back in and it should be just fine I think that's basically all I wanted to go over um, besides well actually getting the uh, converter, I guess that's important. I put a link in here, so it's actually an eBay link to uh, this person's uh, store, or a Halcon, which I'm assuming he's the one that that manufactures or or has these uh, manufactured, and you can get them for. So there's the terminal one there, the RJ45. They got a PS2, which I have one of those too. They got XT and AT. So if you have uh, a model that uh, you know uses that, I think it was the, I think it was the Model F. I don't know if there was any Model M's that used uh, AT. Maybe there was. But there's all sorts of different adapters. They've got the, um, actually, so mine actually is SDL, but I didn't buy that one. It was more expensive because I just had the PS2 and it's fine just to use that. So, and I don't know if this one actually has the. You have to look because it. This doesn't say that it has the ability for remapping and all that. Uh, okay, yeah. So this one's got remapping and everything too, and macros. So it's got the same chip in there. So that's good. All right, so. Really, I think that is all I wanted to go over. Um, we went through all the steps and we got our converter programmed. So no matter what computer I use this on, my all my keys are going to be the way I want them. And that's kind of the goal. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to upload this to my main channel, but I'm also going to be up uploading this to the retro dev. So like I, have, I haven't uploaded a video to my main channel in at least... It's been like a couple of years, but, uh, I was working on some projects and just not all of them worked out and I got, you know, busy with life and stuff. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching and have a great one.